Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets webinar. My name is Chris, and today we're going to take a look at Fibonacci trading, uh, specifically in the Forex market, but we can take a look at some commodities and stock indices as well. You can follow us at Admiral Markets and at Chris Forsick to get all the uh, latest info, uh, content, and uh, analysis. And of course, uh, at Admiral Markets, you find a lot of more information uh, regarding technical wave and fundamental analysis. So take a look uh, at the website admiralmarkets.com. First of all, before we take a look at uh, today's Fibonacci trading, be aware that this uh, this webinar and later on video is shown to a global audience. Take a look at admiralmarketsglobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out if it is suitable for you and other details. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange at global financial markets is considered high risk, may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, plus you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, thank you so much for your attention on that. Today, we're going to focus on FIBS, but uh, with FIBS as uh, any other tool, in fact, it's just part of uh, a larger plan. In this, uh, tr in this webinar, this trading webinar, I look specifically at these four steps. First of all, I want to know what the trend and momentum is. Then I want to identify if I want to trade with it or against it, mostly with it. Uh, in uh, some rare occasions, it's actually good, of course, to, to find a counter trend spot. But those are less often than, uh, than we perhaps think. The opportunity is something that uh, could be a fib or a pattern. It could be a pause, like a, like a bull flag within larger momentum. Then I'm checking filters, like support or resistance, maybe even news events, uh, to see if, if a trade is worth it or if it's too risky. And if it is worth it, at what zone, where do I like to see price move to before trading it? So for instance, in some cases, I would like to see a pullback uh, and to, to 50 fib or 61, any of those two, before I think about trading it. I would be able to trade it at those fibs, but I could also wait for confirmation signals like a candlestick pattern, uh, engulfing twins, a pin bar at the 50 fib before taking such a trade. That would be the trigger. And then I measure the reward to risk. The risk, uh, whereas the, the safe, I mean, safe is not the right word, but where's the uh, optimal stop loss? And uh, where is the take profit at the supporter resistance levels that make sense. So then I measure the reward and measure the risk and see if that ratio uh, is sufficient. All right, here we go. The calendar, we had an um, uh, interest rate on the Australian dollar or the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia had a decision and it kept it at 1.75. Uh, later today, we have some yellow and green tagged events. So take a look at that on your own uh, leisure. You can do that through Admiral Markets, for instance, by going to, uh, let's see, what is it? Analytics? Yes. Analytics and then Forex calendar. Um, otherwise, this week, we have a lot of news events. We have FOMC tomorrow. Yesterday, we had Bank, of, Bank Holiday in the U.S. Friday, we have NFP. So there's a lot of um, important data coming out, I would say, after the Brexit as well. That would be interesting uh, to, to see. Um, well, maybe too early for that, but, you know, it would be interesting to see that data. All right. Let's see. Let me find. There we go. So FIP trading, well. Basically, I'm still using the same FIB on the dollar four-hour chart as I did last week. This particular candle is still uh, dominating. Now, of course, we've had days already since that candle. So its importance is, is slightly less than, um, than it had last week. When you have that many candles just going sideways like this, it becomes a bit less important, I would say. But still, it is the master candle. And as long as <clears throat> that high does not get broken... I think of putting a fib on this candle makes sense. You can put fib also just from the very top to the very bottom. That's also possible. And you see that price respected the 50 fib if we do that. If we use the candle, then we see that it respected the 61.8. 
So we can put both fibs on. Obviously, I think that uh, at this point of view, there's no other fib that makes sense because this was the latest swing high, swing low. This was the most recent push down. So I don't think that any other fib makes sense than this one. And uh, you can see that there's a confluence at the 61.8 and 50 fib. That's where we stopped, where price stopped at around 111.50. Next confluence, if price makes a dash up, would be 112.25, where we have a 78.6. 61.8 and at 112.50 we have an 88.6 fib that would be the next strong resistance 112.25 112.50 it's a quarter level as well as well what is a quarter level well basically you have round levels like 110 and 120 quarters are split are splitting or slicing that into four parts 112.50 117.50 that is an ultimately a very strong point so i would definitely be looking for potential shorts uh, in that zone, it could even be worth taking a pending order at 112.25 with a stop loss at 113.05. Um, or what I like to do most is just wait for a candlestick reaction on the one hour chart, like engulfing twin, see if there's a reaction, and uh, then take the trade. So that depends, but I think both are equally valid methods. So, yeah, that's very simple, my euro dollar analysis. If price gets up there, I think that's a good resistance looking at FIBs, and I think that that could be a good turning spot for a push down. Uh, now, one reason why the stop loss of 113 is a bit risky is because 78.6 FIB of the bigger FIB is at um, 113.15, right? So from that point of perspective, the safest stop loss is actually above the top at 114. Uh, 35 ish, but that's that's very wide. That's why maybe waiting for a reaction at this uh, zone, and then if we get to reaction, then putting the stop loss above it is gives a bit more a high probability that price will respect that level and move down and not just keep pushing up like this and eventually even hit uh, 113.50 before turning around. The problem is with fibs, we never know which fib. Will, will be respected, even though we have uh, a good chance that all these FIBs will be respected. There's never a guarantee. Uh, I would say two out of three FIBs get respected, but one out of three doesn't on any particular time frame. So if there's a trend, so, you know, that, that could be this case. One out of three could be this time that price pushes through it and goes to the 78.6 FIB. So that's the disadvantage of from that perspective, putting a stop loss even above the 78.65 could be a bit better, like 113.35, if uh, if a pending order is used. If a uh, candlestick pattern is used, then putting it above the candlestick pattern makes sense. All right, so I'm expecting, ultimately, I'm expecting this to happen. Now, considering uh, the fact that I, would, I think that we're going to see this push up because price is basically making a, uh, a triangle like this with a flat top, if you look at chart patterns, right, and a angled support line. So from this perspective, it breaks the resistance. I think there is a good chance it could ma make that dash up from 111.70 to 112.50. That's extremely small space, so I don't think I would want to trade the upside, but only wait for the break and, and kind of run into resistance to trade it down. But if it breaks support, that could be a breakout trade to the downside. That's not our focus of today, uh, but that could be a trade to the downside for a uh, push lower. I should use a red arrow instead, like that. And in that case, we're following through with the momentum. This was all correction and uh, a breakout would kind of signal the continuation of the bearish momentum that we already had during the Brexit uh, announcement, all right? Or I should say poll, oh, not poll, but um, uh, the, uh, yeah, poll actually, referendum result. All right. So that's your dollar potential. I think four hour chart is the best. If you look at the monthly, there is a bit of indecision. We have new candles, of course, for from a uh, monthly perspective, June, close so we have new candles for june to to look at and i'll do that in a second the only thing i want to do is actually 
um, show you very quickly this four hour fib I think yeah what you can also do of course is put a fib from here to here to look for targets all right and you see a minus 272 target as well around 112.60 minus 61.8 target at 113.58 so that could be you know the case as, as I said this could be a bigger correction in that case it would be a zigzag up to the target that's another confluence right there and if it breaks above that target then it could go up to this target all right so that could be a classical push down a zigzag correction and then this so that fib placing it on this swing high swing low could be another good thing to add so three fibs even make sense on on this time frame all right so let me get rid of all these fibs and let's take a look at the monthly chart And then we'll take a look at the pound. So we got a doji last month. And uh, we see basically that uh, there's indecision. So there's, despite the down push, the monthly really didn't, the bears did not keep control of this monthly candle. And uh, there's no significant push here as yet. So that's a bit of indecision. We know that this is a big consolidation. So price could be in a new downtrend, but it has to push through these purple lines to confirm that from a long-term perspective. With this perspective, all right, we see a small bullish candle. So, you know, despite the Brexit on the euro dollar, this could be the downside, beginning of the downside, but there's, I think, not enough confirmation as yet. We only, the only thing we know for sure is that this is a box and going sideways. And that this could be the end of it, and this from here on we're starting down. But uh, to get that confirmation, we need to break through these levels. And uh, this could be the start of a downtrend. And we'll see. In that case, if it is so, we you know price should not break above uh, these this top here. All right. So as it retraces higher, it's getting closer to resistance. It has space to fall down to the next major support. And if it breaks that support, then we're probably in a bigger downtrend. But the best uh, trade as it gets higher from an R to R perspective, small risk, bigger reward potential there, down to 108. So these boxes are lining up nicely. The higher price goes, the, and the, you know, the closer it gets to, uh, to 114. Now, will it get up to 113.50 or would stop at around 112.50? before falling. That's something we have to see. And uh, therefore, I think the best is to take a look at price action as it moves up higher. All right, pound USD. If you have any questions, of course, you know, no problem, just, just use the chat, of course, and I'll see your, uh, your comment. All right, pound is pushing as we speak, actually. And this is something I was saying yesterday, breakthrough 132 is needed. That would break through this horizontal level, through this trend line. And I would uh, basically uh, send this pound USD lower. Of course, pound has already fallen substantially. As we can see uh, here during the Brexit. And then uh, here we still have a pretty good candle, basically acting as a master candle for the moment. All these candles next to it, we're just going sideways, not breaking the high, but staying above the low. Now we're breaking below that low. So this looks like a breakout. And uh, I would expect continuation to the round level of 130. I think that's the next target. Um, bigger target, even lower, perhaps. 127.50, 125. That's how far price could go. Uh, for the moment, 130, I think, is the target. Now, how do we know if this is a breakout that is sustainable? I think keeping an eye on this four-hour candle, and if it has a close, Somewhere near the low. This is a small candle so far, but relatively. But uh, it should do. If it is, uh, if it's a close near the low, I think that's a breakout. And in that case, you know, a small retracement, maybe back to the 132 or close to it, 139, 131.90, for instance, could see a continuation. I think a stop loss above that candle should be sufficient. Candle high with a target. Just above 130, maybe 130.30. 30. 
but 160 pips potential that case and the stop loss about 80 for two to one trade Now, if at the end of the day, price has not broken below this bottom, has not broken below 131.10, and it fails to, today, push below that, then I would just exit personally that trade uh, at whatever profit there is. Because uh, I think from a time factor point of view, it's important that today we get the break of the bottom. Otherwise, we might, there's a good chance that there's going to be a bigger consolidation before pound pushes further. If price manages to push through 131, I would hold on to the target I just mentioned, 130.30. And it could be good, of course. What I do is, is trail stop strong four hour candles. So any good four hour candle, I'll use the high to trail stop and uh, reduce the risk and then later on lock in profit. So yeah, that's how I would trade this breakout. We are looking at a breakout, I think, out of pound. Um, and from a FIB point of view, I guess there's no FIB to be used on this back, big time frame. To, to, you know, there was a FIB during the Brexit when it rebounded to the 38.2 slash 50, depending how you FIB it. There is another 50 bounce here, perhaps, but now not on this time frame. So the only thing that you know, FIB might make sense. It's on the 50 minute chart, for instance, trying to trade at this breakout. We could put a FIB. Um, let's see. We can probably use this, this mini top here. All right. And that is the same as fibbing this four hour candle, in fact. So that's the same on the 50 minute chart. And of course, I don't know where this bottom will stop. Price could still fall some distance before we get a retracement. If it falls all the way down to, let's say 130, 130. All right, let me put the fib. I don't know exactly where the bottom will be. That That's something we have to see, but eventually this will stop and retrace. And, uh, you can see a 50 fib at 131.96 or 131.80. Those would be turning spots. Oh, excuse me. Those would be turning spots for the next push down, probably the New York session, I would say. So this is how, you, how a fib makes sense, I think, on this time frame on a 15 or the four hour candle. Breakout is also happening on the Euro Yen, as you can see, for instance, here. Um, good strong impulse down, correction back to the moving averages, and now price is breaking below that. So if you put trend lines like this, you would see the breakout a bit better, perhaps like that. So price is breaking below it. So uh, one thing we can look for is a pullback continuation, and we just hit the 272 target after a shallow fib right here. So, um, you know, a move back, a retracement back to the 50 or the 38.2 fib could be turning spots for continuation downwards. On a four hour chart, you see that we see two strong four hour candles. So, a 38.2 is probably the most logical at this point. At about 113.88. We can put also the fib all the way down here. And a 50, 113.75 slash 114. That's, that would be a sweet zone for turnaround. As you see, we're below the, the, you know, the candle lows of the last few days. So I think that uh, any pullback here could be interesting. Now, Looking at current price, we might not get it, as you can see. We might not get that pullback. 
So that's something to say, like the pound. If it does push for a lower low, you know, I'm going to move this fib. Where is it? Ah, here. Uh, anywhere to the new bottom, and eventually there is going to be a retracement, and that will be the uh, the fib trade to uh, to look for, I think. All right, so that's the euro. Yeah, that looks interesting, just like the pound uh, as well, and the euro. Now the dollar yen is pushing the the euro yen as well to the downside here, as you can see. The dollar yen is also breaking as we speak. In fact, right now, so maybe some of you are in that breakout trade already. Um, if not, here too, I think a pullback makes the most sense. Probably. Well, this is the focus of today, and this is how I would use those fibs. All right, let me see what the best fib is on the dollar yen at the moment. Probably from, from 102.50 down to the new bottom. And uh, here too, I don't think it's worth taking the breakout because the breakout has already occurred. This is something that um, either was a good trade on this candle as the price broke through the trend line or probably even better, I don't think that was a great one, um, would be the break of this trend line right here on this candle. Right, an entry here, 102.38, and the trade is doing very well. That was a great breakout. Now we don't have breakouts. This was um, a good one-hour breakout. On a five-minute chart, you know, that could have been a... An entry here as it pulls back and continues. But at this moment, price is really falling um, and is an impulse to the downside. But not only that, we already had a pullback. We had already consolidation. So I would like to see a bigger pullback to a FIB before trading it. Breakout here was good. A pullback there was good. But... Uh, even maybe on the 15 minute chart here, but I would not trade it right here. It could fall 20, 30 pips before before we get the retracement, but I don't like trading the basically the the break of the break of the break. That would be already a multiple breaks. And then the likelihood that price will eventually, it could continue, but I'd rather take it at the beginning, relatively close to the start of the move than when we already had a couple of breaks like this. So dollar yen, <clears throat> sorry, dollar yen, euro yen waiting for, for pullbacks after the breakouts. Euro dollar has not broken, as I said, but has good confidence at FIB levels. Pound USD is the same, waiting for pullback for uh, continuations. And these are the FIBs I'll be using on these four currency pairs. I think that uh, those look interesting. The, the pound yen is really following suit as well. We could, you know, run through it too, but it's pretty similar to uh, what we just uh, sh shown and saw on um, the dollar yen and euro yen. As you can see, same kind of formation, strong downside and break of that trend line, but more importantly, break of this one earlier today. And this is well on its way. This was all during the Asian session when this started to fall. So here too, same same scenario in play. Break of the pattern, of this pattern. This was a descending wedge pattern, as you can see. So break of these support trend lines, break of these patterns. And that was a good pattern trade or breakout trade. If one is trading the pattern of the pattern, then this would have been the bear flag after the pattern break. Right, that's what I how I say how I trade patterns. So that would have been another entry potential there. But here we're all in an impulse. So I think the best fib at this moment probably is trading this strong hourly candle, putting a fib, maybe even on the candle itself. Or otherwise putting a fib from this swing high, this top to the the bottom.
It's also the four hour candle, more or less, basically. So that might happen in the next session, maybe not in the London session, but New York session, we could see retracement to the 38 or 50 fib of this candle and a turnaround. Ozzy uh, had the, the news event already behind it. What I'm looking for is breakout here of this trend line or perhaps this one for upside. In that case, we'll get a zigzag to the upside and we'll see price pushing to the minus 272 target. I think this is the best fib. We see a bounce at 61.8 right here. So if we get a break above those resistance trend lines, we got space down up to these targets. Now that break, um, I would look at on the daily chart. That might happen uh, a while from now. That seems price seems pretty far from that, so probably not so interesting for today. Right now, I'm not that interesting in trading it to the upside personally on the Aussie. It's um, you know moving up to resistance, if anything. Downside also not so interesting because we had bullish candles. Five in a row. So for me, not interesting, the Aussie. Kiwi. Here too, same thing. Bullish candles, but approaching resistance. Not interesting for me. If you you know think differently and you see a setup, by all means feel free to let me know. Of course, we can take a look at it. I'll be curious to hear in, you know about your opinion, no matter uh, the pair, in fact. Feel free to uh, send screenshots and we can take a look at what you're how you're analyzing, how you're seeing the charts. And that's a good exercise in any case because it's always good to to measure your you know, how you how you see things to others and, and see if you can learn from uh, feedback, for instance. That's always a good thing. It's always a good routine. All right, Dollar Cat. Um, as you can see, Low spread on the dollar cat. That's easy. You can see that with the mini, mini terminal. That is a part of the MT4 Supreme Edition. And I just wanted to emphasize that because uh, some traders are perhaps new in here and you don't know what it is. This is an extra IT enhancement for MT4 um, from Admin Markets. It's called Supreme Edition. And there are 60 extra things, uh, including this uh, mini terminal that makes trading easier regarding uh, calculation of risk management. But a lot of other extra things, like for instance, and these are just a couple of them. Once again, 60, you'll find, I'm sure, some of them very interesting. Others maybe not, but out of 60, I'm sure you'll find a ton that you like. Alarm managers, correlation matrices, correlation traders, market manager, sentiment trader, session map, tick chart, trade terminal, just to mention a few. Uh, regarding the dollar cad though, um, Looks like it's in a triangle. I don't think fibs make sense. We want to use fibs when price is trending, when there's momentum. Well, that doesn't have to be trending necessarily. Trending is good, but as long as there's momentum is another. Because, for instance, what I mean with that is there could be a trend going on, but we see a good counter trend momentum. Then there could be a zigzag. So then putting a fib on the momentum, even though it's counter trend, makes sense too. As long as it's not ranging and going sideways, you know, it, it that as long as it doesn't do that, then fibs make sense. So putting a fib anywhere between these green lines is dangerous because price could easily break tops. It could, you know, um, stick around here in this zone, and um, the 50 fibs and stuff are not going to be respected. So the only fib that does make sense is something that captures this retrace this retracement in a way. So a fib like this, for instance. Uh, is the only thing that could make sense. Now we see that FIB is not really respected, so maybe it doesn't really add any value, but that's the only thing that does make sense because we see here that this is a consolidation that could stop at the 23 or 38.2 FIB. So if it breaks that consolidation, we see that the 38.2 could be a resistance. So that does make sense because we have momentum here. So often, if there is a consolidation, I don't trade, I don't put the FIB in the consolidation, but it could make very good sense to zoom out, see the bigger picture, and then put a FIB on a, on a larger kind of swing. From that perspective, you know, there could be, it could make sense still to put a FIB on the weekly swing high, swing low, for instance, the, the very big swing high like this, 
and we see the price stopped at the 38.2 fib here. So this gives us already more context. Is this a, if we break to the upside, this could actually be a continuation of this momentum and a 38.2 fib bounce. So in that case, then we want to be careful of these fibs because those could be stalling spots, but maybe not continuations. They could be those, uh, a bigger zigzag like this, down to this confluence at the 50 and target before we get the bigger bounce up. So that's why this is what I refer to as, as the game in a way with fibs in the sense that we're vulnerable a bit to various fibs being used. So often it's worth trying to trade a fib, but realizing that that fib might not be the, might be a bouncing spot, but not the turning spot. And therefore having a flexible trade management is important because, okay, let's say that I'm trading it to the upside but I ignore the fact that this could be a bigger ABC zigzag down to the 50. I stick in that trade no matter what, even though I see bearish price action here, I have a chance to move it to break even um, and, and, and you know, remove the risk even because I know that this could happen. And if we don't do that, then we're really blinded by the fact that the price could go down to a lower fit. All right, so that, that's, it's good to be flexible. Um, if it is a breakout and if it is an uptrend, most likely we'll see something like this continue and push higher. So monitoring this part here is important to see if we get that or do we get this instead. Looking at patterns and price action as the breakout occurs is important for FIBS too. All right, this is a high time frame too, so you have a bit more time to do that probably than uh, on lower time frames, but you can do it really on all time frames. Uh, your odd is in a pattern too, right? Look at that, it's, it's clear. Support, sorry, resistance. Um, support, we can draw probably in multiple ways, but this is one of them. Um, here too. Uh, let's see another one here obviously connecting these bottoms so you got a lot of bottoms that we can use only a couple of resistances that's because price and generally of course has been moving up here here uh, and here with some sturdy corrections I'm not saying but overall sentiment has been up on this uh, weekly now this is in a triangle so what kind of fibs make sense well, probably only this one at this moment, the recent swing high, swing low. That what we don't see really a respect for the fib. 78.6 fib bounce. We could put a fib from the very bottom to the very top as well. And we see price. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's kind of in between those fibs. So this that fib does not seem to be used that much. So we can take it away. Let me try this fib here. Let's see, target was just about a hit. This is probably the best fib. For the moment, I think that uh, these trend lines are probably more valuable than any fit, but if we zoom into the daily, I don't see any fib that makes sense. I think that uh, as price heads lower, it could be still a bouncing spot as this triangle continues or a breakout. <clears throat> we'll see. All right, pound odd. Pound odd is definitely trending to the downside now. It's been very volatile with the pound odd, hasn't it? Boy, oh boy, has it been really a, a roller coaster. First of all, we had a strong upside, exhaustion, weekly pin bar. Look at that. That was a beauty, wasn't it? Right there. You see this one? Beautiful pin bar. So yeah, good, good trend. Um, reversal. 
Um, and um, then we had uh, a strong reaction here at end of fall. So really a lot of ups and downs. Now we're moving down very clearly. Look at these weekly candles. Monthly candle, enormous big for, uh, relatively speaking, compared to the last, well, what is it? This is the biggest candle since probably this candle, up, or, or maybe this one. Let's check quickly. We're talking about a 2300 pip candle. Very quickly measured. So the biggest candle since, very quickly, you know, measured since this one, which is, Two thousand start of two thousand nine. So we're talking about one, two, two thousand ten, two thousand twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seven and a half years ago. Definitely already broke the uh, low of last month. This is bearish, heading lower, breakouts occurring. And we had a breakout right here. This is something we discussed last week. Breakout candle. Fib on the breakout candle, retracement to the 50, now heading to the target. That's what we discussed last week. And um, that uh, just made the target. We had a bit of a consolidation. All right, so the Fib to, to use. At this point, probably the retracement here towards the new bottom. And I think a 38.2 fib could be very interesting. Let's take a look at the daily candle. That's, you know, the only problem about this is it's a pretty big fib. I'm not sure if we'll, if we'll retrace that deep. So let me take a look again. Maybe the best fib is actually the yesterday's bearish candle. All right, if it goes down to this target, 174 60. Then I would feel confident to move the fib from here to here. For the moment, I'd rather use yesterday's daily candle still. We just hit the 272 target. That could be a bouncing spot, and it could go back up to the 50 fib at 177, which is a good area to look for shorts, I think, down to 174.60. If it doesn't bounce here, rather continues, then I would move the fib to the new swing high swing low. So let me repeat that just in case. For the moment, I'm using yesterday's daily candle. Price hit the 50, 38.2 confluence. If this, and now I hit the target, if it bounces 176.50, 177, turning spots down, I think, to 174.60. But if it doesn't turn here, but breaks, then um, I would move the FIB from here to here. And look for kind of a, a bear flag, preferably to the 50 or 38 fib for continuation push. In news events, you want to always be careful with um, regarding data announcements, but also if, if there are big names talking, like for instance, the Bank of England, uh, Carney speaking, so then you want to be careful indeed. Keep an eye on um, how the market reacts and see if, if trading uh, is suitable or if you want to already exit before. What to expect? Well, I, I in general, I would say calming words probably. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's difficult to say. We'll have to see, obviously. Uh, I'm more into technicals than, than really fundamentals. But I would expect calming words, trying to... Talk confidence in a way to uh, to the market and, and to the pound. I would I would expect maybe maybe some light kind of hint about what could happen regarding interest rates. I don't know how much information there will be shared.
already. You're in New Zealand making some nice uh, progress to the downside. This could be a bigger zigzag on this daily chart. Beautiful 50 fib hit. Price got space down to the minus 272 target. We're below these bottoms. 150 is the target. There's a lot of space to the downside there. All of these euro pound crosses moving lower. It's uh, almost difficult to see. Because of the huge moves, 170 within a couple of weeks down, 1500 pips. All right, let's make it a bit bigger here. But recently it has been pretty choppy actually. There was a good breakout here. But we got a pullback actually after the breakout had some continuation and uh, this could be a pullback already as is actually let's put a uh, mark where the candle high is so this could be a pullback as we speak actually when we fib the daily candle, came close to the 78.6 fib. There's a bit of momentum. So let's see if it can make one more push to the 155. In that case, there will be divergence between the five minute charts, and that could be an interesting uh, turning spot for downside. Good fib, 78.6 fib, psychological round level. It just missed it here. Now, it doesn't have to push up, but if it does, I think that could be interesting on the year in New Zealand. All right, Bob said uh, Bank of England statement today that is something indeed that remains to be uh, cautious of. And that is at what time? Noon? So, yeah, that's something to be. Uh, to be careful of, let's take a look at, uh, let me check the time. Doesn't say here, but PMI is also important, by the way, at uh, 10.30, no, sorry, 9.30 British time. All right, but I think it's, I think it is 11 a.m. UK time, 12 a.m. noon. Central European time, if I'm not incorrect. But anyway, please check yourself. But I think that is uh, the time. I have it here on a different time zone. So I'm not sure. I have to double check that. Um, or let me quickly calculate. Yeah, it is noon. 11 a.m. UK time. Good. All right. So any questions? If you have any um uh, Questions, please let me know. If you would like to join our Wave Focus Tomorrow Strategy webinar, we're taking a look at waves. Please do so. Same time, same place. Nana takes a look at Price Action Training School. He takes a look at ATR breakouts. And um, Thursday, we're taking a look at uh, how to interpret the news. 4 p.m. GMT time. So I hope to see you in those webinars. As I said, there's a lot of analysis always on the Admiral Rockets website. Yesterday, you had the opportunity maybe to look at uh, my video. And then it also had his um, thoughts about the euro dollar, about a consolidation within the bearish pennant. And there's other things as well, market heat max sentiment. There's a wave analysis that I do. There's articles and tutorials. There's a ton of them on a lot of topics. So if you're looking for a great place to learn, I would say that this is this is a place to be, but also not for learning. You can use, obviously, platforms like WebTrader, 
and of course access the market through admin markets as well very importantly um, so check that out admin markets won the best mt4 platform or mt4 broker award last year in uk so i'm sure you will uh, enjoy that experience all right so take a look i wish you good trading thanks so much i see no questions so that was pretty quick but what can you do the breakouts happen now we're waiting for pullbacks so there's nothing much to discuss besides this I see I'm on a trade for your dollar when there's one hour break at 104 and now I'm 100 pip loss. What to do? Um, there were 104, I'm not sure what you mean because price is at 111.70. 104 was a long time ago. All the way here, price was 104, maybe here. No, not even that, I missed 104. Yeah, your dollar is moving up as as I was thinking that this could be basically a uh, um, a triangle or may, more or less even a um, ascending wedge. So I'm expecting the price to move up to one twelve fifty now, one twelve twenty five, uh, one ten forty. You took. Let's see. So if you're at oh one ten forty, sorry. Uh one ten forty. Um yeah, it depends how much lot size you have. It depends on your leverage, how how big your lot size is and how much you're risking at this point. If you put a stop loss above one thirteen thirty, is that a big a big risk percentage of your account? Or not is exiting the trade right now is that a big lot size or not it all depends on your risk management you don't want to over risk that's the most important right so whatever that is you want to keep an eye on that technically speaking i think there's a good chance the price could turn at 112 50 112 75 um 113 so you know above 113.15 i think it's Good chance the price will turn back down without breaking that. There's never a guarantee, though, of course. But I think there is a there is a decent chance this is a zigzag, and then it will head lower. But if that's a good stop loss for you, it depends if you know you want. If that's a very big risk, then it's not worth it. I think if you took a breakout, if you took this this breakout like that. The best stop loss would have been just above this candle. And I would probably not be in that trade because the whole reason for being in that breakout is already gone. In fact, I think personally. So that's you know part of my thoughts, but it all depends on, on, on details that I don't know uh, as well. But I think stop loss above this top or this candle would have made most, most sense for a breakout like this. Unfortunately, it failed indeed. And we got an expanded correction. And uh, when we did, it started to seem likely that we'll continue with that zigzag. All right. Well, I hope that uh, you managed with that trade to seem wish you uh, wisdom with that and hope that it's all within, you know, the risk management that, that you feel comfortable with. That's the most important. And uh, hope to see you all tomorrow. Wish you all great trading. Cheers.